You know, once I work out how to use Google Slides, that is. Yeah. All right. Can everyone hear me? Yep. All right. Hi, everyone. So I was asked to present to you today on the topic of building tools for open source communities. Quite honestly, I don't know what that means either. Uh, so we're just going on the fly here, trying to work out what that could mean. That, 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 that's a good tool to build, an automatic microphone mover. <laughs> um, but when you think of starting an open source project, what's the first thing you think of that you need? You're probably going to need, we're going to need some kind of tooling for it. Immediately, you're probably going to think, uh, immediately, you're probably going to think that we're developers, we need to get. Um, version control software. Probably going to need an issue tracker. Uh, many, many other small things. And when I hear most people talk about this, the immediate response these days is, oh yeah, we'll just go, <laughs> and we'll go to the GitHubs and use that. Because it offers everything that most, most people would want in an open source project. The problem is that for many of us, GitHub wasn't actually around when we first started contributing to open source. I don't know when everyone here first started using open source, but GitHub only really became a thing in, I, I think it was 2008, somewhere around there. It, it's about, it, that was about then. Before then, we mostly only had other DIY project hosting, and we also had this amazing thing called Google Code. <laughs> you might remember Google Code. It sort of started in 2004, eventually sort of grew, ended up hosting 1.5, 1.4-ish million projects, and at the end of the year is dying. <laughs> It's, it's already dying, and we, we're just getting to visit it on its, on its deathbed, basically. You can go and retrieve a tarball of all the, old so all the old source for the projects. But come next year, a lot of open source projects that are hosted on Google Code are going to be forgotten. We're already seeing it today, where people are suddenly realizing that, oh, that application script I used to love using is no longer at its old URL. And they're having to go dig it out, and they're mirroring it on, onto GitHub, which is great. But there's thousands of lines of code out there that we may never realize that we needed. So open source tooling is really something that comes and goes. You have to be able to continuously improve it and iterate on it. And hopefully GitHub's going to stay around. But you know. What, who's to say it's not going to go like Google Code? SourceForge is also another one that was there. I heard someone mention that. I don't know the history myself, but it's, it's still there for now. Uh, and this hates me. OK. Anyway, my name's Dion. I am a automatician, I work at Automatic, not the company behind WordPress, but the company behind WordPress.com. Uh, you can find me on Twitter, on the web, you can get my email or even your WordPress dashboard. 
I work on WordPress itself. I'm a lead developer. It's WordPress is a community-run volunteer organization, basically. Automatic sits off to the side. Uh, they hire me and donate my time 100% to the WordPress open source project. There's about 500 of us spread over 45 countries. Uh, no one in Singapore, as far as I'm aware, but we'd love to change that. Part of working on WordPress has led to me doing a lot of things over the years. I originally started off, like many people probably in this room, just contributing to one open source project. I'm not quite sure how many years I spent just contributing to the project, but I started about 10 years ago. Back then, it was mostly just contributing via track, which we still have today, I might add. It's still on SVN, as it was back then. We now have Git mirrors, obviously. Uh, also a GitHub mirror, but that's another to topic. But that's just one of the small things that you need when it comes to an open source software. Eventually, you need more than just an issue tracker. You need more than just somewhere to put your code. If, you have, if your project grows, so does everything else around it. When WordPress first began, Automatic did not exist. Automatic started because the founder of WordPress, Matt Mullenweg, decided that he wanted to further WordPress and make it easier for people to access through the commercial venture WordPress.com. That was a tool around the early version of WordPress. It was a way to get more people to interact with WordPress, to get easy access to it, without having to be a developer, without having to understand how web hosting works. Today, you can pick up any bit of any web hosting package, and WordPress is going to run on it. Unless, you know, it's one of these new fancy things that doesn't seem to support PHP. Yeah, I don't know of any of those either. Uh, but the point is, WordPress will run on whatever you give it. And that's been one of its major things these days. But having WordPress run is only half the story. WordPress has a lot behind it. I can't preview it. <laughs> uh, Behind, run, behind WordPress, we have a lot of WordPress.org APIs. We have version control. Uh, we have version update checks for both plugins, themes, and core, plus translations. Translations are a huge part of what WordPress is. WordPress is used by, I don't know how many languages I could search, but there are quite a lot of them. English accounts for approximately 50% of them. That means that, well, 50% of the time, chances are the person using WordPress doesn't actually speak English. And being in Asia, I'm sure there's many people here who have relatives or friends or even acquaintances that po possibly are not comfortable speaking in English. Maybe they are. They understand what English is. But they're not comfortable using it in everyday life. I'm sure in Singapore it's not rare to be able to speak English. But when you move to somewhere else, say Spain, once you go into the country areas, you will come across a lot of people who will understand what you're speaking to them if you speak to them in English but they're not going to speak to you in English. They can speak their tongue, and that's, that's what they know. The tooling for WordPress.org to be able to support these people is one of the most important parts of WordPress to me. It allows people to actually interact with WordPress. And we have hundreds of volunteers con contributing thousands of translations to WordPress 
every release. The WordPress.org also has a open source plugin directory, which itself is a tool to provide WordPress plugin developers and theme developers a location to host their creation and spread it with other WordPress users. We provide the tooling for other open source developers to create their open source project. Uh, we offer SVN backends for it. We manage their plugin package creation, and we create support forums for them. All those things are the tools that the plugin authors or theme authors don't have to create themselves. Uh, I've personally worked on a lot of this work myself, and it is no small feat to create these tools. They're complex pieces of software that without, there are, without thinking, you might think is just a small bit of the ecosystem. But they're really not. Without those tools, you just have no open source project in the first place. This presentation isn't something that I've rehearsed. It's pretty much made up on the spot. Mostly because I got asked to present this with very short notice, and then, you know, procrastinated on it. <laughs> uh, so I thought I'd just quickly skip over most of what most of what the abstract would have been, and keep talking about PHP and how it applies to WordPress. As most of you know, WordPress is a PHP application. It still supports PHP 5.2. Yeah? Does anyone here run that? No? I'm glad. 5.3. OK. <laughs> this is really good. I personally don't support anything less than 5.4. Yeah. One of the reasons for that is not that graph. It's not that graph either, but there you are. English, US, 53%. Uh, I'm not going to attempt to work out those colors on this screen. But what I did want was this screen. The PHP version that WordPress users actually use. You can view this online at wordpress.org slash about slash stats. But the core crux of it is that if you look at PHP 5.2 usage, it is currently sitting at 7.4%, this one right here. Then as we move around, you'll find PHP 5.3 at 19.9%. 5.4 at 29.7%, but you get the idea. PHP 7 is thankfully growing at 2.3. It's actually a little bit higher than that, but whatever. WordPress knows this because we've got the tooling around it to collect these aggregate stats from many millions upon millions of WordPress installs. I don't know the exact number, but I don't want to. I don't need to. You got a question? Does that include WordPress.com Sorry? Does that include WordPress.com? This does not include WordPress.com, nor does this include the really bad hosts who disabled the WordPress update notifications. They exist. <laughs> if you find them, please use another host. <laughs> um, the numbers that you see here is for all versions of WordPress 2.8 onwards, I believe. If we look at WordPress 4.5 and 4.6, which just got released recently, Thankfully, these numbers are a little bit different. I don't have the graph with me, but you'd find that PHP 5.2 is more down around the 4%. That's still, million, that's still over a million websites. The 5.3 usage actually increases to almost 25%. Thankfully, we do actually recommend that people use the latest version of PHP with their WordPress. Currently, we recommend PHP 5.6, purely because the jump to PHP 7 has caused a lot of compatibility issues for many plugins. 
Many plugins aren't necessarily built by people who are competent PHP developers. I say competent not as a not as something against the developer, but simply that they're not keeping up with the current standards of development. There are many things that change between PHP 4 and 5, and there's many things that have changed between 5 and 7 that for many developers would have caught them unaware. They weren't aware that they were doing something wrong previously that is now a fatal error. They might not even get a fatal error, they might just get a warning that they never saw. These developers often don't understand or know that there is a problem until they're told about it. One of the things that we are doing for plugin authors, at least in WordPress.org, is we're starting to scan their plugins using the PHP 7 compatibility checkers. Flagging to both the plugin author and ourselves that, hey, this plugin's got an issue under PHP 7. Can we do something to help the plugin? Is the documentation that needs updating? So far, this is still in the planning stages and slowly being rolled out. But it's something we're working on, and it's yet another tool that we build to help plugin developers create better open source projects. That does mean, if you look at the PHP supported versions, that you'll notice we've just passed PHP 5.5 security status, uh, maintenance window. We're nearing the end of PHP 5.6 active development, or active maintenance, I'm not quite sure the wording. But come 2017, PHP 7 is going to be the only option that we can really recommend to anyone who is launching a new website, even though that's what, yeah. But what that actually means is that currently, only 23.4% of WordPress installs are running on a version of PHP that is currently in security maintenance. What this tells me is that although we can do a lot around WordPress and open source tooling, ultimately, it's down to hosts and WordPress users and everyone in this room to help update PHP so that when we get all these new features in PHP 7.2, we might actually be able to use them in our WordPress plugins in the next decade. I say decade because at the current adoption rate, it's going to take a long time before PHP 7 is our dominant platform. Even today, PHP 5.4 is our dominant install base. Thankfully, 5.5 and 5.6 are slowly eroding that, but we're seeing more people move from those to PHP 7 than we do from 5.3 to higher. There's only so much education that helps. Writing better tools around how to migrate WordPress, WordPress sites to new versions of PHP, how to migrate WordPress plugins to new versions of PHP, and how users themselves can migrate their own site or hosts. We have attempted to contact hosts who run PHP 5.2 WordPress installs. We made a very big dent when we got, I'm not going to name who, but a very large US host to get rid of their PHP 5.2 installs. Unfortunately, it still only moved the needle a few percent. We're now looking at a super long tail that, quite honestly, we can't find contact details for. You can look at their IP and, yeah, that's probably this company, but they've resold that to another company who's resold that service on a cPanel install to this other company. And ultimately, there's very little we can do. So that's me asking you. If you can find a way to help us, find a way to help your future user, or your future developer, or your future friend, we'd love it. <laughs> Don't actually know what that was, but yeah. I work with WordPress. Not everyone loves it. Some people prefer Drupal. Some people prefer Joomla. Some people prefer PHP Nuke, even though it doesn't exist.
Um, I don't mind, as long as you're using open source software. It's all good. I'm here at a PHP conference, so even though WordPress still has 26.6 of the top 10 million websites and a 59.9% CMS market share, everyone's still an open source project and still using the same tools to get the same goal. So thanks, everyone, because you're making the web a better place for both WordPress and you. That's the end of my main presentation. I <laughs> I'm open to any questions about anything WordPress, both here and later, about working remotely. I work in Australia, in a small city called Brisbane. There's five other people in my, from Automatic in the same city, but the rest of them around the world. Time zones are interesting, as I'm sure you're aware. <laughs> uh, but please do go along to WordCamp Singapore. It's on September the 6th. I won't be there, unfortunately. <laughs> but it's at that URL, just in case you didn't know. WordCamp.org is a great tool. Every year, there are hundreds of WordCamps around the world. There's a WordCamp in Singapore coming up. There's a WordCamp in Japan coming up, India, and Nepal. They're all in this part of the world. Oh, shouldn't forget Sydney is Australia. That's the end of September, if anyone wants to come over. But WordPress has many tools built around it to help open source communities around the world interact. And almost anything you can build for any given community is a tool that benefits the open source community in one form or another. So I'm happy to take questions now or later. Depends if we've got time. Yep, we've got time, OK. If anyone has any questions I'd like to ask, feel free to throw them at me. I'd like to talk a little bit about uh, how WordPress uh, can be regarded with different technologies, like keepmeetup.com, or technology, uh, and so on. Uh, use all these tools to handle the, uh, the uh, volunteers to run the and to back the press. Do you want to something that? I'm not entirely sure what you'd like me to say there. Um, WordPress has many communities around the world. There are many local meetup groups. I believe there's one here in Singapore as well. Yep. <laughs> I, I don't know the URL, but I'm pretty sure I could Google it. Meetup.com slash WordPress Singapore. Yeah, <laughs> that sounds about right. <laughs> um, if anyone wants to get involved with WordPress itself, make.wordpress.org is <laughs> unreachable on this Wi-Fi. So I have internet, yes. My servers down. <laughs> Not the WordPress servers, just to be clear. <laughs> my local sandbox, my VM. <laughs> so you can't see that. Uh, but make.wordpress.org is the central hub that we use to contribute to WordPress. From there, we link to all our local teams that help make WordPress what it is. We've got a translation team. We've got a documentation team. We've got a support team, a plugin team, a theme team, a core team. I shouldn't forget that one. We've got the help hub team, and a lot more that I can't, can't think of right now. But they're all people like you trying to make WordPress a better application. Um, yeah. Yeah. 
PHP fig. That's an interesting topic. <laughs> and one that we can probably discuss over more social drinks later. <laughs> uh, that being said, WordPress is quite happy to work with a great open source community on a lot of things. Uh, we already coordinate a lot of things with other open source projects. Uh, security issues is right up there. Before we release anything, we look if it affects another project. We try to stick with standards. Unfortunately, the standards that have been written diverge from WordPress's philosophies in a lot of ways. Uh, we like to adopt PSRs. Unfortunately, they're not written in a way that WordPress can't use them. Uh, we don't support namespaces. We still support PHP 5.2. That kind of means that we can't implement most PSRs in a nice, user-friendly way, as far as I'm aware of. Uh, coding standards conflict as well, but you know, they're all issues that we can get past, but it's something that, for WordPress at least, doesn't necessarily benefit the user directly. And many people in the past have focused solely on the user experience rather than the developer experience. So things are changing slowly over time. I'll be interested in seeing where it goes. I don't know myself. Anything else? Where does the data regarding PHP version of users who is using WordPress come from? OK. Uh, WordPress.org collects statistic data based on the HTTP access logs that WordPress sends. They work, yeah, that WordPress sends. So twice daily, your WordPress install will go and check for an updated version of WordPress, plugins, and themes. One of the things that the version, WordPress version update check sends along with it is information regarding its system. So it sends along the WordPress version, the PHP version, the MySQL version, uh, or the MariaDB version, as it may be. Uh, they're included to help determine if the updated version of WordPress can actually support the ver that version of um, WordPress, well, that version of PHP. When we first added it, it we still supported PHP 4.3, as far as I'm aware. Uh, so we were adding it with a future, future intention of switching to PHP 5.2. But over time, we found that it's a much more valuable source of information for statistic purposes. So we can actually see the state of the WordPress universe as it is. Um, so that's where it comes from. Unfortunately, we don't have any more fine-grained details about things like uh, who the server is or what PHP extensions they're running, although we'd really like to know that. Well, speaking of privacy, it's good. Yes. In certain cases. In certain cases. Uh, I can't tell you what your website runs right now, but I mean from our data, but I can tell that the servers hosting your net block predominantly run PHP 7. So overall, anonymous data collection, and hopefully in the future we'll have more opt-in anonymous feedback to help us create better projects. So, Certain companies collecting data. Yep, I'm aware of that. Uh, there are certain plugins around to disable that functionality. Uh, I don't know them off my hand, but they exist. Again, that's open source. Yep. <laughs> no, we, we, make no we make no secret of the fact that we collect an, uh, aggregated data like that. Uh, we think it's valuable information for both WordPress, other open source projects, and the web in general. It gives, us a good, it gives us a good, very wide net of uh, example hosts. We can look at the top 10 million websites out there and determine that, yeah, PHP runs on 80% of them, or that 90% of them run a recent version of PHP. But that doesn't tell us about the million other small web hosts that everyday web users and mom and pop websites run on. 
and they're where the majority of the users are. Yeah? I'm sorry, I'm having trouble hearing you. Okay. Um, now, one, one of the worst things in WordPress is uh, the development cycle. And uh, I, I, I made my research, and there is bad words uh, from Woods.io. Uh, sorry. Bad words, uh, you don't know. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm not catching the word, sorry. <laughs> it's. Uh, it's very long. It's very long. R B B B E G R O. Bedrocks. Bedrocks. Yes. yes sorry. <laughs> uh, do, do you know this? Uh, um, it, it's a solution to develop uh, in WordPress, and uh, so you can separate uh, the, the develop uh, the, the development and uh, the project. Mm -hmm. so, I'm not. I, I'm not entirely sure. I'm familiar with what, you, what you're trying to get. That unfortunately, um, I'd love to talk to you later. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm just really bad at hearing in large rooms no, and <laughs> aircon, and yeah, I'm rather tired right now. <laughs> I don't have jet lag like some of some people here do, but I didn't sleep much last night. <laughs> um, but no, really, talk to me afterwards, and I'll answer every question you got. <laughs> uh, was there anything else? No? Okay then. <laughs>